Hey everybody and welcome to another APA tutorial video. In this one, I am going to be updating the APA Excel tutorial scatter plot. And we're not going to be using this ridiculous scatter plot that I made in 2020, uh, September 17, 2020. Oh boy, I had the pandemic there. So I'm updating it. Uh, you know, this is with Excel 2020. We're going to be using Microsoft Office 365 Excel, which is constantly updated, of course. So, and it's very similar to the Windows version on the Mac, oh, uh, on the um, Microsoft Office 365 platform, the subscription service. So this is a little bit more recent than the other three updated videos that I've done, but we're going to be doing it on a completely different. This is just, this is just, this is ridiculous. Um, not as many views as the other ones, of course. So, you know, scatter plots, they're fairly uh, common and easy to put together in APA style. So I asked ChatGPT to give me a list of 50 um, items for a correlation, and we just have the person's age, which is ridiculous uh, because they have 55.99. Uh, you know, you got to love ChatGPT and coming up with data. It's not bad at, at coming up with data, but, you know, it, it is kind of ridiculous. Uh, but we'll see whether or not there is a correlation as we put together. I did not ask it to do the correlation. We're just going to make it for the scatter plot. So we don't actually need the participant um, column here. I just it, it, it made it, so I just added it. Um, we have their age in a decimal form, years plus decimal, and then their score on some test. And let's just say it was out of 100. So let's see if there is a correlation by looking at a scatter plot. Just by looking at these values, I think it, it kind of does look like there's a correlation. Then that's because ChatGPT doesn't know really know how to make a data set that isn't going to be statistically significant. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've got Excel open here, 150%. Hopefully the quality is going to be better than 2020 as well. More powerful computers, better settings on my OBS. So let's go to insert. We click on insert. And over here in the chart area, we are going to find little dots. It's hard to tell, but here we go. We've got X, Y, scatter. So we're going to click on that. And we've got a number of different things to make. We're definitely not going to do a bubble graph, but we only want this scatter. There's the ones where you make smooth lines and markers, ones without the markers themselves, it's just smooth lines, scatter with straight lines and markers. Honestly, can't picture, I'm sure you know what these would be used for. I actually have never maybe seen these. That's all right. We're going to just do the scatter where we make uh, we make uh, dots, right? But let's go ahead and select our variables first. So um, you want to make sure they are lined up as X and Y. So we want age to be on the X axis and we want score to be on the Y axis. It just makes sense. Age is sort of immutable in this uh, paradigm, this this methodology, you are your age. We're not going to be manipulating that. We measured it once. Yeah, we measured score once, but you are your age before your score is measured. So that, it makes sense to put that. You can flip them if you want to have age on the uh, Y axis and score on the X axis. It doesn't really matter uh, because this is a bivariate correlation. And so it's a bidirectional relationship to measurements, um, both at one period in time, one moment in time. But the way you have it set up for Excel is important. You want uh, your X axis to be on the left of the Y axis variable because it's going to read score here and it's going to put it uh, on the graph. So just be aware of that. So let's go back up and choose uh, unresponsive this morning. So we're going to click on that and there you go. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew it's going to be a line. Uh, well, there you go. Anyways, it, it's still a useful. Uh, it's still a useful graph. So let's go ahead and just expand its size. Let's move it down just a little bit. We're going to have the uh, options over here. So let's go ahead and use uh, do that. And as I expanded the size, you can see that the dots are. I wonder if that's going to be a positive relationship. Huh? I don't know. What do you think, viewer? Put your guesses in the comments down below what you think the correlation between age and score is going to be. Hmm. I don't know. Anyways, let's go ahead and modify this because this is not an APA style. First things first, score, like I said, is going to be put in the graph. We want to, it gets put in as the title of the graph. We want to get rid of that. So either you can delete, select it and delete it, or you can go up to add chart element and go to chart title and click on none. There is a bug here that when you click on none and it gets rid of score and we go back and we take a look, it's still checked above chart, not on none, which is weird to me, but there you go. If it's not there, it's not there. It's not hiding. So you don't need to worry about that too much. Next thing we want to do is get rid of these ugly grid lines. While they kind of help you with the graph itself and finding a point, scatter plots in APA style are meant to show you the trends rather than the uh, looking for an individual dot in, in this graph. So we're going to get rid of these grid lines and scatter plots come with both the primary major horizontal and the primary major vertical. Uh, check means on, uncheck means off, as you can see here. So we're going to go and check these. We have to do it one at a time. And there you go. No more on there. Next thing I want to do is go ahead and modify my X axis here. And so I'm going to double click on that. It's going to bring up my format format axis options. So we're going to be using the options menu here and then the fill and line menu here. So first thing I want to do is I want to add in my tick marks. Now, this is going to be age. So it is saying the maximum age is 70, which if we kind of scroll down here, we've got some 60, 61, uh, 
62, I think it's 63, I think is our oldest, right? So that's 70 is pretty good. And by tens, we're going ahead and leave it like that. So we're going to leave our bounds and our units uh, as the automatic values that Excel came up with. But we want to get tick marks here because these are actual values and tick marks do help people line them up. So we're going to use major type. We're going to go and we're going to pick inside, outside or cross on the X axis. I actually like doing cross which puts them uh, like this. Now, I don't like doing it on the Y axis. Why? I don't know. Do you tell me? I'm weird. But I like doing cross down here. So it's technically inside and outside combined. So there we go. They are like that. Uh, the line is a bit faint. I want to make it a nice, dark, black, stark against the white backdrop as possible. So instead of this light gray color that it's defaulting to, I want to go ahead and specifically change that to black and up this size thickness, the width of the line itself to one point font thickness. And there you go. It's clearly identifiable as the X axis. And you can go ahead and change all of these other ones. These are all uh, not prescribed by APA style. Rather, these are aesthetic choices that you can choose. But on the at the base level, you want to have a nice, clear axis line. The last thing we're going to do is, on the axis itself is change the size and font. So from Aptos, Aptos Narrow, which apparently is my default now, um, I'm going to go with Arial because it's readable. It's Google's default. So if you want to make graphs in Google, you know, it's going to be producing those in Arial font. Kerning's good. Every every character has a clear distinction, right? So Arial and they are all also like slightly larger characters uh, at different font sizes. And then at minimum 14 and 14 is a good size. If you are making this graph, this particular size on a poster or in a manuscript, right? So, I mean, if I have to, to make this a little bit smaller, if I grab the, the edge and I make this a little bit smaller, um, it's going to make the negative space in this graph smaller while still keeping my font a good size. You might hear my chair squeaking here. Now, one more thing for the X axis is to go to chart design, add chart element. And here we're going to add our axis tiles in. So the first thing we want is the primary horizontal. That's this one down here. So we add that in. You can see the blue. It's going to add that in axis title. And we are going to triple click or click and highlight the whole thing and change this to age and years. Just so people, when they read it, they know exactly what I'm talking about. And then I'm going to highlight it all. And I'm going to go to home and we are going to again change it to Arial and 14 as opposed to 10. You can make it bigger if you want. If you want to differentiate it from the size of the numbers, that doesn't really matter here. OK, so age in years, X axis or horizontal is done. There we go. Age from zero to 70. Now it goes from zero to 70. I can change that because my youngest person is, is 18 and a half, it looks like. So we can get rid of zero to 15 and, and start it at 15 if we want to. If I did that, I would click on the X axis again, go here, go options and change the minimum bound to 15 because nobody else is that young. See, so we've got 15, 25, 35, 45. And now you can see because I did 15 and my major did not change from 10, it increased my maximum to 75, right? And now we have this big space at the end, which isn't great. So let's go ahead and change this to 15. It didn't change it like I wanted it to. Let's go ahead and keep this at 70. There we go. So we don't actually have a lower bound now. Um, and I can click these reset buttons to change everything back to where it was. But this kind of makes a little bit more sense. Um, let's let's see if we could do 65. How about that? There. There we go. That's a little bit better. It's just what I want to maximize your space a little bit and not include values that won't be there. And, and as we in, in sort of decreased our X axis size here, we also spread out these dots in um, useful ways, right? A little bit more readable, separate the dots. Moving on to the, the Y axis, I'm going to go ahead and click on them to bring up my axis options here. Uh, I don't know why alignment came up first, but we're going to ignore that. Uh, like I like I did with the y, uh, X axis down here, Y, I want these to not be this light gray, but actually be this dark black. And then we'll increase by quarter point to one to make it nice and thick. To get our tick marks, uh, we are going to go to tick marks in the axis options submenu, major type. And we're going to go with outside but you can go with cross if you want to cross this is what it looks like again as the inside and outside um it kind of looks the same here with age uh oh, the x-axis down here eh, it's again it's a it's a choice uh showing you different options in these different videos why not right so here we have our zero to 100 that is the appropriate uh scale size for this particular scale if it's a score from zero to 100 you can score zero you can also get the maximum of 100 so we'll leave it there even though our lowest score is only 38 as it chose it, right? So we're going to leave it like that. But we do want to make sure that our values look appropriate. So Arial and 14 to bring it into um, agreement with our x axis. The last thing I want to go ahead and do is add in my axis title. So we go to chart design, we go to add chart element, axis titles, primary vertical, it will add it uh, on the edge here. And we're going to go ahead and put in uh, score out of 100. There we go. 
uh, make sure that it's all clicked. I keep over clicking. Sorry about that. Uh, make sure it's all clicked. And we're going to go to home again and change our font to Arial and 14. There we go. Click off the chart. Wonderful. That is a place to leave it. You can leave your scatter plot here if you'd like. This is an APA style scatter plot. There are a couple of uh, other options that you can do. So I'm going to go ahead and add that uh, to the end of this video here. But you by no means have to add these things. OK, so you can do one or the other. So you can stop here and say, Dr. Swan, I'm done. Or you can keep watching and find out about our squared and trend lines. So let's go ahead and add a trend line to this graph. You might be thinking, why do I have to add a trend line when this is like clearly a line by itself? And yes, thanks, ChatGPT, for giving me a nice linear correlation between age and some score on some some test. I don't know. Whatever. I'm going to add the trend line regardless. So we're going to go up to chart design, add chart element and go to trend line right here. Trend line has this nice. So you have a few options here. Of course, this is a correlation. So exponential linear forecast and moving average don't actually help at all. Um, there are more trend line options, and we can look at that in just a second. But for the most part, you're just going to click on this linear button, uh, this linear line, and it will add the linear line. And boom, there it is. By default, by default, uh, Excel adds the trend line from last data point to uh, the other data point in this dotted dashed line. I hate it. It is ugly. It's also in the same color of your uh, data color. So it, it is also blue. Let's change that. But before we do, I want to show you just what um, the other trend line options are. If we click on more options, it'll come up with the trend line options here. OK, and it's also selected the trend line itself. And you can go here to power. It also adds, I think, polynomial in here. And um, with polynomial and moving average, you can specify the order or period respectively. You can also um, give the trend line a name. By default, it just does the word linear or logarithmic or polynomial, whatever, with the variable name in uh, parentheses. This will only show up if you have the legend marked. So if we have the legend on the graph, so right now there's none, right? But if we added this, it would give me a dot for the score, and then it will give me a line with the linear score label, or we can add custom. I'm not going to go ahead and add those, but if you're, you're free to mess around with that. Um, you can forecast forward or backwards several periods if you have a moving average uh, activated. Right. Um, or uh, the what is it called? The forecast linear linear forecast. This one you can move periods back and forth. You can also have the intercept on the line. You can have the display the equation for the line on the chart or you can display the R squared value on the chart. So let me show you what each of these look like. So set intercept will tell me where the intercept is. So if I display the equation on the chart, it will. Um, so zero is the intercept of X, but that might be the incorrect intercept. So we can say um, 30, I don't know, and move it on. <laughs> it, it moved it. There we go. But you can see that it changed the graph itself. Um, so we don't want that unless you know what the actual intercept is, right? Um, here is the actual thing. And now intercept is marked at 16.66. So that's the equation. One point two, so the score equals 1.21 times whatever age you are plus 16 and a third score, right? So uh, a baby is going to score at least 16 on this test. Look at them. Amazing. So the equation um, is a box that can be moved anywhere. But once you move it, you can't uh, you're, you're out of those uh, line options. So you have to click on the line again to get there. The other thing we can display on the chart is the R squared and the R squared gets put with wherever the equation is. So R squared is 0 0.985. So 0.99, which means our correlation is about 0 0.99, 0 0.98. So R squared, take the square root of 0.985 and you'll get um, what the correlation of this. So if we do the square root of 0.985, oops, where's my nine? Five. We've got, this is Raycast if you're curious, 0.99, right? So it is literally a uh, linear, this is a linear graph. Thanks, ChatGPT. It's okay. It doesn't really matter. We're putting the line in there anyways. Uh, so you can move this around. You can change the font size just like uh, we've done. So instead of Aptos narrow, we can change it to Arial and we can make it 14 to make it even bigger. Look at that. Um, know that this is an element um, in the graph until you print it as like a PDF or a JPEG or something like that. You export it um, wherever it is. That's where it stays. But if you put this into a uh, Word document, for example, from Excel or a PowerPoint, uh, then you can move this element around because it is an element in the graph. Um, within the MS Office environment, right? Last thing we want to do is modify this line because it's got awful, right? So we're going to go to the pink bucket and we are going to change what kind of line it is. So by default, it's this dotted dash or round dot versus square dot versus line or other kinds of dashes. Just do a solid line. Just do it. There, there we go. It has, you can kind of tell there's little dots in there, which is really weird. I just changed it and it's, I wonder if that's like me zooming in at 150%. I wonder if that's the reason. <laughs> weird, right? You can also put end caps on it, right? If you want to, you can put little circle end caps on it. Uh, I, I don't do that. It's weird. 
yeah. Oops, I clicked off of it. Um, I oh, it just did one end arrow type. You got to do begin arrow type as well. Oh, begin arrow type circle. So begin and end from left to right, right? So you can do that if you want to. That again, very clearly, uh, a an aesthetic choice. I wouldn't do the same end caps as your dots are because then it kind of just looks like they are also dots, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and change that back to lines themselves. The last thing I want to do is the line is 1.5 thickness. Now, if you want the dots to stand out, leave the width small. But if you want the line to stand out, then you want to increase the width of the line. Um, and it really depends on how thick you want the line, right? So here I have a thick line and it goes, it kind of blends in with it. If we wanted to make this stand out a little bit more, then I'd make it black. Okay. One, uh, you can do whatever you'd like with this one. Again, an aesthetic choice. You don't even need to have the trend line for a APA style scatter plot. A lot of times they're included to drive home the relationship uh, as quickly as possible, right? You see the scatter plot. Oh, it is a very linear positive correlation between age and score. Wonderful. So that is how you create an APA style scatter plot updated for 2024. Ooh. Um, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave those in the comments down below. Added value for this particular video is this, um, this workbook, this file will be linked in the description down below. Put in your own data here and it will update this graph to exactly the specifications you might need to modify because I change these myself manually. You may have to have to press the reset button um, just to show you again the reset button. If I double click on double click on this, the reset button is in um, oops access options here. Click these reset buttons. OK, so if I click these reset buttons, I did negative 10, <laughs> zero, zero, zero. There we go. So that's how it would look if I didn't change anything. So I'll go ahead and save the file like this and it will be linked in the description down below. Thanks for watching this video. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye.